Sal here just editing this and I realised that you'll hear in the episode that I've bought this fancy new recordy thing. It's called a Rodecaster Pro 2. If you're a podcaster, you'll know what that is. Um, and I don't know how to use it. So I'm afraid that Leanne doesn't sound her normal, beautiful self today, but we'll fix it for tomorrow. I'll do some knob twiddling <laughs> and uh, we'll get it fixed. So apologies for Leanne's sound, but good news is that I sound pretty good. Welcome to a Silas Life podcast. It's Podverse. Oh, here we go. Here again. we go. Strap yourself in, kids. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> So for those of you lucky enough to miss Podmas <laughs> last year, <laughs> Podmas is basically 25 days of us. We do a podcast every single day. They get progressively shitter as December goes on because we go, oh my God, it's eight o'clock at night. We forgot to do a podcast episode, which is kind of what's happened now. So it's kind of like about 10 to 8 on the 1st of December. This will be going out in about an hour's time when I've done some editing. Oh, that's no idea. Let's just put out a warning now that this will be an unedited conversation. If we say something offensive, we might edit that out. It depends how offensive it is, I guess. But I think on day one, we're, in, we're not going to say something truly offensive on day one. We're not. And I don't know about you, but December has crept up. November just kind of disappeared in a haze of... I want to say gin, but there wasn't even that much gin. It was just a haze <laughs> of busyness and shit to do. Mm. Honestly. So what's the format of Podmas if this is their, their lucky first time listening to us? So Podmas basically based on like, you know, off of the YouTube um, vlogmas where YouTubers will upload a video a day, 1 to 25 December, a little advent calendar of content for you. So we did it for the first time last year. Um, I'd like to say it went well, but I'm not sure it did. <laughs> but it was fun. You seem to enjoy it. Um, and you know what? It keeps us. It keeps us busy on on a on a run up to Christmas, where again we can't go back to the UK. Three years running now. I know, I know. We're also, just so you know, we're using a brand new fancy little recorder thing, which I don't really know what to, how it works. <laughs> One of the things it does do is this. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all these buttons that I can do all kinds of sound effects. So, for example, I can say, I have absolutely no idea how to use this thing that just arrived in the post. And then I, I just keep pressing all these buttons and i don't <laughs> no i don't know what it's gonna be like in the edit it could be really really loud I don't <laughs> it know. sounds like that's gonna get annoying <laughs> anyway um so so my point of bringing this up was that um if the levels aren't quite right then hopefully we'll get that you know i'll, I'll, I'll work that out over the next few days so leanne Yes. So for this Podmas, I think we, we were quite ambitious last year. I think if you did listen, or if you want to go back and listen, you'll see that we started strong, got very weak in the middle, and maybe <laughs> slightly recovered it towards the end, because we were trying to think of like different things to talk about. Whereas I think this year, what we'll probably start with is we had this idea of talking about the things that we wish we'd have known before we started living and working abroad to, I guess, share our experiences and, and very basic wisdom to anyone who is out there and thinking about making the move abroad um, or just, you know, connect with you guys that listen and, and you know, maybe you'll empathise with some of the things that we've seen as challenges or some of the things we've seen as awesome. And we'd also love to hear from you. So we've already reached out to... Um, our previous guests on the episode going back a couple of years um so we have some lovely little voice notes and messages coming up uh, from previous guests with their insights on what they wish they'd have known but we also want to hear from you listener yes you reggie jeff definitely you karen you know you've got something to say <laughs> Yes, so we want to hear from you. Get in touch. What what are we asking? To, what was the question we're asking? What what did you what did the one thing you wish you'd have known or been told before you made the move abroad? So Leah, what's the one thing you wish you'd known or been told before you made the move abroad? 
I think this is very much on recency. We're in Croatia now. We're currently applying for our second digital nomad visa. Um, if you're not sure how it works, currently in Croatia, if you're a third country national, so non-EU, you can get a 12-month visa provided that you can prove your income as a nomad. So earning income outside of Croatia and not from a Croatian company or individual. And you get 12 months of tax free, which is awesome. Um, and you get to stay in the beautiful Croatia. So why wouldn't you? So we, you know, you know, you listen. We know that we spent last year in Croatia. We had our three-month gap. You have to have six months in between applying. That six months ended for us on the 17th of November. So we're doing our, our application again. And I... Oh, I wish somebody would have told me about the amount about the amount of fucking paperwork we'd have to gather, collate, fill in, submit. Um, we sent an email today to a address at Sea Change. You know, we've talked about them before. They've been a guest on our podcast as well, who are helping us with it. And honestly, I sent an email. It's like twenty eight attachments, and I don't think that's even half of what they need. Mm. It's insane amount of stuff you need to to produce it is it is and there's all kinds of things like you need to do a police check which i I think if you're from canada that's a bit of an issue in the uk you luckily they do it all online um but if you're from canada i think you need to send it off and then get it sent back to you and get things notarized i mean i don't know if this is a europe thing but we've never heard the word notary (laughs) <laughs> until we moved abroad and now every every single document needs to be notarized which seems to me that you basically take the document into an office off of like the 90s because oh, yeah. you've got a photocopy the size of a room oh yeah yeah two um, two to three people just walking around with like stamps and stamping stuff like zhoosh, zhoosh, zhoosh. that's how it happens and 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 basically you pay them and it's not even a lot of money you pay them like eight quid or something so what's that ten dollars ten u.s um, and they'll basically stamp something for you and then you walk away with it. And I, I don't really understand it. But anyway, so they put some kind of ribbon through it or string. They do, you, I think you have to pay extra for the ribbon. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like, it's like I, I wonder if offices have their own thing. Because I'm sure in Spain there was some kind of like ribbon around the corner that was attached to the sticker. And when we were in Polo, it was like a white and red string that was also attached with a sticker. And... I, I don't I don't understand. I mean, it's giving people jobs, so fair enough. And ours is not to question why. Just tick those boxes. So if you are coming from uh, the UK, I think New Zealand, Australia, probably the US, uh, Canada, and you are used to, and Germany, I'm sure, they're used to basically just uploading your stuff onto the internet, pressing a button and going, great, my bins are going to be empty tomorrow and X is going to happen and Y is going to happen. It is not like that in most European countries. So things we wish we'd known, I think, were the bureaucracy is a pain in my... There we go. (laughs) That's me using my new sensor button. (laughs) It is. So I I think tips to respond to this um i'm i'm a little bit i'm not OCD at all i'm really quite messy and not detail orientated in any way but when it comes to documents and saving things on my computer i have files for everything so when we're doing our application before i was like oh we need our our health insurance certificate where's that that we got back in six months ago and i was like oh i know exactly where it is because it's probably going to be in this folder under this name Mm. and there it was so i think yeah being organized is key having copies of everything on on like Dropbox or something similar like Google Drive where you can get it on your phone and get it easily. Um, organization, I think, is key because you can't get around the bureaucracy. You just have to you just have to suck it up, don't you? But I think organization is a good tip. Yeah, another good tip, and it won't surprise regular listeners to know that it's going to be a nerdy one, is to basically set up a separate Gmail account or Hotmail if you want, but Gmail's, I think Gmail's great. Um, and, um, and basically set up a separate G- uh, Gmail account which just deals with all of your visa stuff, all of your travel stuff. So booking.com goes through that account. Um, If you get some insurance, put that email address down. If you are talking about visas, put that email address down. Then you're not going to miss stuff in your main inbox. You're not going to clutter your main inbox up with all that crap. 
Um, so that's number two. And and then like a sub point of that is that with that, you also get a Google Drive, which means that you can create or upload all the documents into one Google Drive. Because when you come to go for another visa, then you're going to have all the information in one place on one Google Drive or Hotmail or Outlook if you're a a weirdo who likes Microsoft. (laughs) (laughs) Tell I don't. Um, And so I think that's really, really useful. Yeah, I think that's a good tip, having a separate email address. Yeah, how else do you manage bureaucracy engage experts? We've talked about this before. It comes down to, and we've got some beef about this after we, I remember I put some on social media to, to promote different visa people that support us and got some proper beef from people going oh is this what it's come to now we're paying somebody to do this and it's like yes <laughs> doll it's been that way for centuries <laughs> you know you're paying money or time it's just whatever currency that you have most accessible to you oh can we just say that again that was really deep thank you pay for everything in time or money it's whichever currency you have is most accessible to you and right now we're, I mean, we're not money rich, let's be honest, but we're, we're, we're more time poor. So. <laughs> so, yeah, engaging somebody to help you with it, help you navigate the language, if there is a language difference, the process, the systems, the unlikely things they're going to throw out and, and request that isn't in any guidance anywhere that they need because that does happen too Mm. just having someone to help you through it um and just to delegate it to you know and it's not huge amounts of money we're probably talking what maybe four or five hundred euros to get this type of help obviously depends where you are and the type of things you're applying for um but yeah either either if you if you're time rich prepare yourself to dedicate a lot of time and energy mm-hmm. and if you're time poor and you can invest in getting some help could not recommend it enough and i think we've we've spoken to lots of people i think on on through the podcast as well that have have done the same thing and just got someone with the expertise to just guide them through it definitely when we lived in um spain we had we brought with us a rottweiler dog um, one of my, well, one of our favourite breeds, um, such a lovely dog, a uh, lovely breed. And then we got another one when we were there. And <laughs> you need to have a dangerous dog licence in order to have a Rottweiler breed. Forget the politics, it's just that's the law. Um, and so it took us so long to get this dangerous dog licence that it came through after the dog had died. <laughs> <laughs> it was very it was very sad I and mean, he was a beautiful dog but he what he wasn't particularly well um and um by the way don't don't buy kennel kc registered rottweilers because <laughs> well because the i've i've had, I've had here like, for a good time not a long time <laughs> exactly so um if i look back i would have easily spent money on someone doing that for us so uh, that was a pain anyway i feel like we're being a little bit sort of like i don't know i feel like we're being a bit negative so let's just talk about some of the positives of living abroad well i think keeping it on the same theme you said something there like it's you know forget the politics it's the law i think that's the thing is to just like let that shit go because mm. if you're gonna let that get to you it's not it's just not worth the energy so i think that's a good a good mantra it doesn't matter about talk politics it's, it's just the law within the realm of bureaucracy we're not talking about human rights you know that um but yeah it is what it is isn't it and it's quite funny and you do get stories from it i remember when we applied for our first Croatia visa and we had this little ritual at the time of going because it was just at the end of like lockdown wasn't it we've been locked down for six months Mm -hmm. and it was like april time and we got into this little ritual of going to um going out for lunch every friday to our local restaurant which overlooked the beautiful bay in, in, in istria um having a few too many wines having some amazing seafood having a lovely lovely time um um, it was a little outing for the week, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I remember sitting there at the wrong side of a couple of wines and getting this email from um, Barbara Adriatic Sea Chain saying, oh, we need you to read this document, download it, sign it, 
and sent it back to me in the next half an hour. <laughs> like, I can barely see, let alone. <laughs> but um, so it's quite funny, but we figured it out, you know, and get, you know, your apps on your phone. That's another good thing. Get your Dropbox on your phone and your, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? It makes for some good stories. And at the end of the day, it's totally worth it because you go through the pain, you go through the process and you get to spend X amount of time in the place that you want to live. So that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's something you, I mean, just wrapping this up now, but that's something I think you need to be aware of is the is that the price you pay to live somewhere like Croatia or whether you want to live in Montenegro, whether you live in um, Thailand, Vietnam. We've got a friend who's uh, traveling Vietnam at the moment and he's, he says he loves it. He'd love to live there permanently, but it's the visa situation means he's probably going to have to leave in the next few few weeks. So it's just the price you pay to live in some of these most amazing places. So I hope it hasn't come across too negative this episode. I think we just, we are, we describe ourselves as the honest guy to living, working abroad um, because we're just honest about this shit that you have to deal with. Yeah, it is. It is. But like you said, you know, once you've got it, you get to spend time without having to worry about 90 days in 180, whatever complicated maths you need to Mm. do. Um, and get to embrace it. So let's finish on that note. Christmas is coming. I'm not saying particularly Christmas yet. I think we haven't got the tree up yet. We'll do that the weekend. Mm-hmm. But bearing in mind, Al, our second Christmas in Croatia. That's true. What are we? What are we excited about? What What is going to make all this paperwork and bureaucracy completely worth it? I think we're excited about the normal stuff. Like we we we, we do genuinely get on really well. Um, and I'm excited about you. you you're going to go and buy a tree. Well, I'm going to come with you and hold the, and carry the tree. <laughs> you're going to go and buy a tree and decorations for about the fourth, third year running. <laughs> Each time we go, we're not going to take decorations with us to the next place. We can't fit them in the car. And then we go out and have to buy some more. So that'd be good. There's um, glue vine, um, the hot mulled wine. That's knocking about all over Central and, uh, and Eastern Europe. Um, so that's going to be around. Um, we've talked about snacks you've talked about making pigs in blanket very <laughs> very uk thing i think it's basically <laughs> bits of sausage wrapped in bacon so um and that's one of my favorite things so i'm looking forward to all that kind of thing what about you me too i think the the really cool thing about living abroad is that you can dip into local traditions and find out new things that will then become perhaps longer standing traditions in your Christmas, but also indulge yourself in kind of your your home country traditions. Like I said, then pigs and blankets, that's such a Brit thing, I think. It's basically a sausage wrapped in bacon. What's not to <laughs> like? Um, but yeah, things like that. But then, yeah, having glue vine. Yeah, we had glue vine in the UK, but not in the same way you have glue vine in Europe. It's not spiked with freaking pear brandy in the UK. It is in Europe. But things like that, getting getting the tree up, putting Christmas music on, which is things we used to do in the UK, having some nice food, some that we know, some that are new. I think just this fusion of tradition, new, old, and just eclectic. That's what I'm looking forward to. Love it. All right, guys. Well, if you're listening, then uh, pull out your Instagram app or your email app, whatever, and tell us what you're looking forward to. And particularly if you're away from your home country, let us know what the traditions are. I mean, I know there's some crazy traditions around the world. I think it's Denmark, Sweden, Norway, who celebrate on the 24th, um, Christmas on the 24th. There's a, is, it, is it one of the Baltic nations who eat a herring that's been buried for six months or something? Mm. I think, anyway, if you know anything about this, tell us. Get in touch. Definitely get in touch. Tell us your Christmas traditions, what you're looking forward to. And if you are currently living and working abroad, what's the one thing you'd wish you'd known? Share the knowledge, share the wisdom. And we will, we will, we will need you. We will call you out. We will celebrate you and what you've learned and hopefully give some good advice in the meantime. So happy Podmas, happy first December. I hope you're sitting somewhere cozy and lovely and raising a glass of something alcoholic or not, you know that's your choice um but yeah happy holidays see you soon well actually not soon we'll see you tomorrow oh yeah oh god i've got a sound effect for that (laughs) (laughs) bye bye bye